Hey everyone, this is Rob from Near Mint Condition, and you are watching Near Mint Condition Gaming Edition E3 Special. This is the third, well, again, it's not the E3. E3 actually did start today, and we've had pressers going on since Saturday. We had EA Live on Saturday. Sunday we had Microsoft. Yesterday we had Ubisoft, Square, Enix, and their amazing Final Fantasy slash Marvels thing. And the PC gamer, <laughs> PC gamer, <laughs> oxymoron, I had their event. And then today was all about two companies, actually, Konami and Nintendo. So I'm actually going to go backwards. I'm actually going to go backwards. This just in, just in. Konami announced the Turbo Graphics Mini. Now, again, I don't know if you know me, but I am a lover of NEC Turbo Graphics, one of my favorite games of all time, if not the one of my the favorite game of all time, probably top three, top five, is all about NEC East One and Two, these classic games that came out on the system. So a Turbo Graphics Mini is right up my alley. Right up my alley. So first of all let's give some shouts out before we jump too far into this. Trigonosis81, thanks for joining. The Collector, if it works. <laughs> oh, it was work! Yay! YouTube, oh yes, actually, let's talk about that right now. Um, there's a problem with YouTube. There's supposed to be, Omar was having, he had a show scheduled at 8 o'clock, and I was supposed to start right after him, and YouTube was busted. He wasn't able to get his stream going, and I'm, we are on the phone, we're troubleshooting, and we're not able to uh, get things working correctly. So, I don't know what in the world happened here but Omar's stream was busted we tried and tried and tried couldn't get it working so he's gonna try and do his thing tomorrow I think he's gonna try and do it tomorrow at 9 p.m. so if you're tuning in looking for comics and Omar check that out tomorrow at 9 p.m. let's see I think you two might be having a problem with me I look frozen that's not good that's not good let's see here hello Oh, that's not good. Let's try this again. Bear with me, guys. And gals, I'll be right back. Let's see what happens. Are we back? Are we back? Are we back? Are we back? I think we're back. Okay. Clicking things. I just want to make sure we're back. I think we're good. I think we're good. Yeah, so what's going on here is everyone and their mother and their brother and their cousins are streaming on YouTube right now. So I'm not really surprised that YouTube is breaking. Um, so maybe this will be a short stream. Maybe this will be quick. I don't know. <laughs> so I was giving props to Triggs, uh, Mary M, Omar broke something. Yes, Omar broke the internet. That's exactly what happened. The whole of YouTube is his fault. And I guess everyone's streaming doing what I'm doing as well. Uh, Dave K, thanks for joining. Uh, I hate that they make Japanese versions of the Turbo Graphics in USA with different games. No one wants to buy two. So yeah, since this information just popped up, let's go ahead and talk about it first. Even though the, actually this is one of my favorite announcements that just happened today. So the U.S. version, the U.S. is getting the Turbo Graphics Mini. Japan is getting the uh, Core Graphics. No, the PC Engine Mini, and Europe is going to get the Core Graphics. I don't know what's in the Europe European version, but in the American version, there's going to be more than six games, but they just announced six games, R-Type, which is amazing, New Adventure Island, Ninja Spirit, which I love Ninja Spirit as a kid, and now East Book 1 and 2, as I talked about earlier, one of my favorite games ever, Dra Dungeon Explorer, and Alien Crush. Love Alien Ninja Explorers too, and Alien Crush is a great pinball game. So that's really cool that these things are going to be like in mini form like these classic consoles. In Japan, it's those some of those games, but they're also going to get Super Star Soldier, which is an amazing shooter. Bonk's Adventure, surely the US version will get Bonk's Adventure, and Dracula X. I cannot imagine that, well, maybe it wasn't localized, so maybe the USA version wouldn't get. Now, you ask what type of person would buy both? This guy. <laughs> or I would buy the Japanese one first and then wait for the American one to go on sale, or some, some iteration of that. We, I am planning on going to Japan soon, so maybe I'll pick it up there, maybe it'll be on sale there, I don't know the deal. But yeah, um, that's pretty amazing that Konami like pulled this out of their back pocket just a couple minutes ago, right before we went live with the stream. So props to Konami. Maybe Konami, maybe we don't need to curse out Konami anymore. Maybe they figured out gaming again. 
I, I like it. They'll take my money. There is a website that you can join. It's a Bunks Adventure, the same as the NES version. Should be the one that's on the Turbo Graphics. What's up, Joe Chip? How's it going? If you're looking for Omar, he'll be here tomorrow at 9 p.m. 9 p.m. Uh, due to YouTube having technical difficulties, I just had some technical difficulties. Hopefully that won't happen again. Otherwise, this will be a very short stream. And I don't want it to be too short a stream because we're talking about the day. This is the day I've been waiting for. This is what every Nintendo, I'm not going to say Nintendo whore, but Nintendo enthousi enthusiast is looking for the day of E3 and their Nintendo Direct E3 edition. So, without further ado, if you saw the Nintendo Direct, you can go ee along with me. If you did not, I'm going to give you the play-by-play. -play. I'm going to make it pretty quick. First thing they kicked off with was Dragon Quest XI. They showed Erdrick's sword, and they showed the hero from Dragon Quest XI show off. It was fantastic. Now, right before this show kicked off, I went on Twitter and said, Dear Nintendo, there are three things that I want. Dragon Quest characters in Smash, because my children, well, my third child is named after a character in Dragon Quest, so now all of them can be represented. I asked for something new that I haven't heard of before, something I haven't seen, and I asked for Super Mario 3D World. If you recall, if you were on the stream last night, I begged, I pleaded, please, please, give me Super Mario World, or Super Mario 3D World. Well, some of those things happened, and some of them did not, so I don't know how I feel about that. Okay. Uh, all right. I'm trying. I'm, I'm getting notifications from other E3 events, but I think we're okay. If something happens on stream, it'll be super duper live. That actually happened. We were streaming a Smash event, and they announced Joker for DLC. I was like, "Hey, did you hear Joker? Joker super live stream hot." It was happening in real time. So they kicked off with Dragon Quest XI in Super Smash Brothers, and then they showed not just the hero from Eleven, but the hero from Six, the hero from One, Two, Three, the hero from Eight, and maybe the hero from Seven. They show four heroes together, uniting and doing Super Smash thing, and dragons coming out, and I guess I assume that you can choose from four of them. It was awesome. I was at work when this occurred, and I absolutely yelled out loud. Totally did. Totally did. So, I'm all about it. That's, that's one down. Next, they showed Luigi's Mansion. Luigi's Mansion looks great, sounds great, lots of spooky atmosphere. If you were at E3 on the show floor, supposedly Nintendo's booth, not supposedly, Nintendo's booth is now a haunted, one of the areas is a big, huge haunted mansion with ghosts flying around and blue, 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 blue Luigi's running around. Um, so, what Switch bundle deal is worth buying right now? I think there was one, I don't know if this is still active, I'll have to check it out while we're maybe while we're talking. There was a deal where if you bought a Switch, you got sixty dollars worth of games. Um, sixty dollars worth of games. So I just saw some fellow streamer, Doctor, not not a fellow streamer. I can't call him that. Doctor Disrespect has banned Twitch streaming because oh, because he was streaming in the bathroom. Which why would you do that? That's gross. So maybe that's why everyone's hitting YouTube, because they haven't been banned yet. So please don't stream in the bathroom. Which bundle should you get? Anyway, very recently there was a bundle where you get a Switch, you got like $60 worth of credit. So that's probably the way to go. Get the Switch and then get whatever game that you want for 60 bucks. Because if you get Mario Kart, it's a great deal. If you get Smash Bros., it's a great deal. If you get Zelda, it's a great deal. If you get Mario uh, Odessi, it's a great deal. I don't know if that deal is still active, but that was the deal. And it was very recently, so maybe a trip to Best Buy is worth looking, or maybe a little bit of internet digging. So maybe if I can see something after we're done, I'll put it in the chat. Um, a free 128 big SD card. That is not a deal, bruh. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to do a service right now. Let's go to BestBuy.com. I'm sure this is probably going to break the internet. This is probably a bad idea, because I don't, but I want you to get a good deal on the Switch. And, like, Best Buy has, like, an E3 section. So, surely, Switch, Nintendo, surely something good is in here. This is a bad idea. It's totally going to conk out. You ever had those ideas that started out good and then ended up poorly? This is what this is. Let's see. What do we have here? What do we have here? Let's see if this is still active. Mmm, doesn't look like it. Zelda's 10 bucks off, that's cool. You can pre-order Animal Crossing. A refurbished one is twenty two seventy nine. Man, 
wish we had this conversation earlier. So maybe get on the, like, Google has this uh, find the best deal shopper, Google shopper thing. So maybe type in into, Ninten into Google shopper, Nintendo Switch bundles. And maybe that bundle is still active somewhere. Because it, it, that, that was the deal. Get yourself $60 in credit, buy something on the eShop, you were good to go. So, hmm. I'll keep looking. I'll keep looking. Anyway, Luigi's Mansion. Look great. There's also a four player local mode where a bunch of people are, are actually Luigi people running around. Did what I did. Buy a Switch and get a game for free. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Dave K, you have internet access. Oh, oh, this things aren't going well. I can already see the red square. That's not good. Hopefully, we don't get cut off. Please don't get cut off. Chop, chop, chop. Ah, internet. No, it's not the internet. This is YouTube. Because we're, I'm good. OBS is green. It's YouTube that's red. Maybe someone can help Dave K, or help Trigonosis find the Switch bundle that I'm talking about. I'll, I'll keep looking after the stream is over, and I'm not streaming any video, so hopefully things won't get cut off. All right. Uh, thank you, community. So anyway, Luigi's Mansion has this four-player uh, co-op option. You take control of different color co uh, Luigi's. Luigi's. Uh, there's Amiibo support. It looks really cool. I was going to buy a Luigi's Mansion anyway, but hey, if um, I get co-op, and me, I'm all in for it anyway. It looks really good. Next, Nintendo showed off the Dark Crystal a collaboration with Netflix and a game to coincide with it that looked like a um, strategy tile-based game. Whoosh, that's really cool. I wasn't expecting that. And the Dark Crystal is actually it's not using CG. It's using, like, you know, actual puppets, which that makes sense because that's what the original Dark Crystal was. And if you remember the Dark Crystal, that was a great thing back when we were kids. Awesome. Next was Link's Awakening. Now, we're all going to buy this game anyway. We're all going to buy Link's Awakening. They talked about the game. They showed some graphics. They showed some scenes. Later on, they showed a lot more footage with it. Some of the things they announced, they announced a dungeon panel mode where you are you put together, like, apparently Onuma always wanted the director or producer of the game, always wanted to put some sort of level building um, system into a Zelda game where you make your own make your own Zelda levels or dungeons. So there's dungeon panel mode. You get like a bunch of blocks that are arranged in various shapes, and then you get different types of rooms, and you have to have them all connect together. Make sure all the doors connect together. Make sure steps and items connect together. There's enough keys, things like that. The boss room and an entryway, which is really cool. How they show this thing putting together, so you can kind of make dungeon your own dungeons, and you get to after you make the dungeon, you are timed on how fast you can get through it. So uh, it was really cool to have onuma san actually play through one of the treehouse members' dungeon, and that's cool just to be able to make. Zelda dungeons and how you want them to be. That, that, that was really interesting. This game comes out September 20th. September 20th. And because Nintendo is so great at taking my money, they also showed off the Dreamer Edition, which comes with the game and a big, I think it's a hardbound art book. This beautiful art book. So, I'm totally going to get that. But because we live in North America and we're screwed constantly, the European version gets the game, the beautiful art book, in a steel case that looks like the old school Game Boy. The old school Game Boy. I'm like, seriously, how 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 do we how are we missing this? How are we missing this? How are we missing this? So I don't think I have import from Europe money to get this edition, but metal steel case it looks like a Game Boy? I mean come on. You 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 had me. You totally had me. So whatever. Anyway, the boring North American edition that comes with the Dreamer book is, is hot on Best Buy and Amazon and it is $69.99, which I, I, I pulled the trigger on that. $69.99. So, that was Link's Awakening. Looks really good. Looks I mean, Link's Awakening looks really good. Next thing that was on the list was uh, Trials of Mana. So, I just actually talked about this maybe a day or two ago, how Omar, my wife, our Omar and I and our spouses would get together and play Crystal Chronicles on the GameCube with four Game Boy Advances and a bunch of cables and things like that. Then I also talked about how we played Children of Mana, which I actually found my wife's copy of Children of Mana right over there. Still where we were. It was lots of fun. So this is now um, Trials of Mana. And uh, Trials of Mana is the same type game, four players. It's local and online co-op. Looks in the same art style. Looks really good. I'm 
looking forward to it. it might be something to jump into and to coincide with that we also have the collection of mana and the collection of mana are a whole bunch of the old secret of mana games on the nintendo eShop. so that's available today world exclusive get your collection of mana games so that includes final fantasy adventure which is the original secret of secret mana or in japan it's known second Tetsetsu one second Tetsetsu two which we all know as secret of mana and second i believe second Tetsetsu three that's a good question. I don't have my Switch up here with me. We'll have to look and see which edition is up there. Oh, I shouldn't use the internet. This is not a good idea. Nintendo eShop. Mana Collection. This is so going to crash. Well, guys, in case we crash, stay minting. Uh, Mana Collection, three game collection will include. This has to, this has to be it. Excuse me, folks. Excuse me. Excuse me, folks. Final Fantasy Adventure. Oh, there it is. Final Fantasy Adventure, which is Second Assessor 1, Secret of Mana, which is Second Assessor 2, and Second Assessor 3. I guess they localized it? This is the first release of Second Assessor 3 in the United States, so known as Trials of Mana in the collection. Uh, how about that? Okay. So there we go. There we go. Uh, Children of Mana, Collection of Mana, lots of mana going on. So, next up. I'm glad I clicked on that. I might go ahead and buy that. <clears throat> Next up, they had The Witcher 3. If you ever wondered if The Witcher could run on Nintendo Switch, the answer is apparently. And they showed some actual captured footage from the real game itself, and it looked really good. So The Witcher 3 is one of these games where you put hundreds and hundreds of hours into it. So am I going to put hundreds and hundreds of hours into The Witcher 3? Maybe, because I only started The Witcher 3 on uh, PlayStation 3. I only did a little bit with it. I did not play a ton of it, so this could be an excuse for me to jump into it. Since it'll be portable, I can take it with me, take it to work, or when I'm at the in-laws' houses, or whatever random tasks that I'm doing. That's kind of appealing to me. So Witcher 3, coming on the Switch. Next, they showed Fire Emblem Three Houses. So that's where you have your three house. Ravenclaw, Dumbledore, and Snugglepuff. Well, maybe it's not those, but there's three houses. It's very similar to that. And choosing your three houses will determine the direction that the game goes. And this will be coming out on in July. July. The end of July. So this is still on schedule. It looks really nice. It has the same Fire Emblem like art style, beautiful anime characters, and Fire Emblem's fantastic strategic gameplay. Looking forward to it. It should be great. Uh, Resident Evil... Zero and One were released, and Resident Evil 4 released for the Switch very recently. Nintendo showed off Resident Evil 5 and 6 coming out to the Switch. So that's coming soon. Resident Evil 5 and 6. Now, let's be real here. Resident Evil 5 was pretty good. Resident Evil 6... Yeah. So I'd be more impressed to see Resident Evil 7, which I don't know if that's going to happen, because that's a completely different super advanced engine, the RE engine. But, hey, who can say no to Resident Evil? I love Res all the Resident Evils. The fact that we're going to get something, even more content on the Switch, sounds great to me. Next, we saw super stylized anime dude. And I was like, this guy kind of looks like Travis Touchdown. Not sure, but maybe it is. But, yes, it was. No More Heroes 3 is coming. Coming in 2020. Hey, it looked awesome. So, like, you know, Travis Strikes Again, have it over there. That was a really cool thing. It was a really cool game. A bunch of, not mini games, but little indie-ish type small nuggets of games that look really nice but like proper proper Travis touchdown no more heroes 3 super stoked super hype about it check it out coming out 2020 thank you grasshopper manufacturer and marvelous bring it to me next um as someone who loves old school running running gun shooting type games they i kept looking like this looks like a version of contra this looks like a version of contra Mm, maybe not. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Turns out it was 3D Contra Rogue Corps. It's four-player, local, and online co-op, and it's pretty far along. It's actually coming out this September. So, Contra Rogue Corps. Now, this is not a dig toward Konami. Uh, looking at the footage, I was a little hesitant on how it might play, but obviously we cannot judge how a game's going to play looking at footage on an E3 stream. So. The previous Contras have all been fantastic. Contra 4 on the DS was one of the greatest games ever. 
Contra on the Genesis is super duper fantastic. Super Contra on even the NES. Contra 3 The Alien Wars, one of the best shooters ever. So there's a lot of great Contra games. Oh, and to to celebrate this Contra Rogue Corps coming out in September, today, today by now, (laughs) Contra Collection is live on the eShop. And that includes all the Contra games. Contra on the NES, Super Contra in the Arcade, Contra 3 The Alien Wars, Contra 4, Japanese Pro Protector, like every Contra game. No, that's really cool. That's really cool. Next, Diamond X Machina. Machina. I don't know what this game is still. I see robots running around, giant mechs running around, and it looks really neat. I am all in for giant... I say I don't like giant robots. Apparently, I do like giant robots. So, this is coming out in September. So, I still have no idea what the story's about, but it's very, very, very stylish and looks really cool. You think the Contra Sale Collection goes on sale before the fall? Like, as in a discount go on sale? Maybe? I don't know. That's a good question. Like, there are a whole bunch of things on sale at the eShop as we speak, and on the PlayStation Store, and on the Xbox Store right now. So, 15 bucks is my price point. Well, hmm. Yeah, it's like 19.99, I believe. So, I don't know if it'll go... It, 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 it will go on sale. It absolutely 100% positive will go on sale. Will it go on sale by September or October? Don't know. Maybe? possibility usually when games go up and go live it takes them a while before things go on sale so i will let you know if it's any good because i'll probably do one more e3 wrap-up stream when all this is over maybe we'll see how time permits and i plan on picking this up because i love all things konami so i I, i'm I'm gonna try and pick this up i have some birthday money that can go toward eShop card so i'll give it a shot see if it's worth your money um I also have a lawn that needs mode, so you can come by and mow my lawn, and I'll give you 20 bucks flat. <laughs> so, next up was, and this was, this made me go, ooh! I looked like the dragon from Panzer Dragoon, and turns out, it was Panzer Dragoon coming out this winter. Oh, you need to play more of the Contra Super C. They're fantastic, especially Contra 3, the Alien Wars of Super Nintendo. Still holds up to this day. One of the greatest games ever. There is a Digital Foundry retro on Contra 3, on Contra, the series so you should watch that on digital foundry and then you can see some contra 3 in the music and the graphics and the gameplay still just holds up to this day it's fantastic so check that out um anyway panzer dragoon this looks like the original panzer dragoon except with much better graphics and sound and stuff but it looked really good and then brought back all these feels of nostalgia so there's not really an easy way to play panzer dragoon so this coming on the switch is awesome and it comes out this Winter, winter. My copy of Panzer Dragoon and Panzer Dragoon Zwei is right over there. Next up, Astral Chain. This is coming out in August, and the dudes who made Astral Chain are famous developers. Astral Chain. I really am just I'm playing fire here. Let's see if I can figure out who these guys were. So these are some uh, famous Japanese developers. Oh, Platinum Games, that's who it is. Thank you. I could not remember. Yes, it's Platinum Games doing Astral Chain. And they showed a very, actually a pretty lengthy trailer. A very cool stylized 3D cell shaded like uh, characters. It's uh, about two cops going through an Astral Chain, shooting things, transforming the things. It was freaking awesome. I loved it. I don't know what it is, but I'm all in. There is a special edition that was announced for Europe. I don't think that we're going to get that special edition. But uh, it comes out in August. It comes out in August. So Astro Chain, definitely check it out. Uh, directed by Takihisha Tara, who is the lead designer of Nier Automata. Automata. And then, of course, Hideki Kamiya. That's the second name. Well, the first name I couldn't remember. Takashi Hishitara. All right. Uh, coming aside. Gajing. I'm sorry if I mess up those names in Japanese. <laughs> Next up was Empire of Sin. That looked very interesting, kind of dark, kind of spooky, kind of spooky. That'll be spring of 2020. That looks interesting. Uh, like I saw images of like ghost boats and ghosty things and paranormal activity. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Then after that, we saw Marvel Ultimate Alliance. So I was looking at this game. I was like, "This looks like that Marvel game that came on the PlayStation 2." It is. It's Marvel the third version of this, Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Uh, so it's coming out in July, and there will be an expansion pack 
in the fall for Marvel Knights, X-Men, and the Fantastic Four. I think that's going to cost a little bit of money, but uh, if you've ever played any of these Marvel Ultimate Alliance games, they are legit really good. So I saw a bunch of extra footage later at the Treehouse, and it looked fun. They were fighting Sentinels. Like, Nightcrawler was there, Cyclops was there, Rogue was there, uh, Deadpool was there, Hellraiser was there. Like, it was pretty cool to have all these Marvel superheroes having an alliance. One of the missions was align with Magneto and the Juggernaut, bitch! And, yeah, it was pretty cool. So, I'm all about that. Next was Cadence of Hyrule. So, if you ever played Death of the Necro Dancer, they that's an independent game. It's a strategy game where you move characters to the to the beat of a drum to music. It's really cool. Somehow they got a license with Nintendo to have Zelda and Link in their game, and it has very Zelda or Link to the Past esque visuals and those characters in the game. I don't know how they pulled that off. That's amazing to be able to put like Link and Zelda in your ending game. Like, please let me let me do that. So, Cadence of Hyrule is coming out on June 13th, and I anticipate fantastic music with it. I'm looking forward to that a lot. Uh, next up was the Olympics. Mario and Sonic at the Olympics. In every event you can think of, underwater basket weaving was represented with your favorite Mario or Sonic characters. And the Olympics are taking place in Tokyo in 2020, so next year. So, this one is going to be Mario and Sonic at the Olympics, Tokyo 2020, and that comes out this November. So I think there might be, this will be pretty interesting because it takes place in Tokyo and Mario and Sonic at the Olympics games I think are developed by Sega in Tokyo. So there might be some extra special things that they add. I don't know. That's purely speculation on my part. Looks cool. Next, we had Nook Enterprises. Nook Inc. Nook LLC show up. And who else could that be but our dear friend Animal Crossing New Horizons. I have some buddies in my chat that absolutely have been waiting for Animal Crossing for a solid 10 years. Like, who <laughs> won a new Animal Crossing and New Leaf didn't count and the two, the mobile game doesn't count either. The 3DS game should count. It should count. It should count. Whatever. New Animal Crossing. The same vein of Animal Crossing. And of course, Tom Nook is there to take your money, take advantage of you, your emotions. Hey, I got you. A, he gives you a phone. He gives you some supplies, a, a crib, and it costs... 50,000 bells. Good luck, because you make five bells a day. <laughs> but uh, that's coming March of 2020. They had to apologize and take a little bit extra time to finish the game. So, you know what? It's fine. We've waited this long. We can wait a little bit longer. Eh, it's fine. This is fine. So, Animal Crossing New Horizons. and It looks looks like Animal Crossing, but it looks really good. It looks pretty pretty. Then there was a montage of a bunch of smaller games. So, Spyro is coming out September. Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure if you've seen previous episodes of Near Me Condition, you've seen Omar and I talk about Nino Kuni. Minecraft Dungeons, which was announced by Xbox, that's coming. Elder Scrolls Blaze, a mobile game by Bethesda, that's coming. My friend Pedro, that's our buddies at Devolver Digital, that's the banana that can like shoot, or the dude shooting with Pedro, that's great. Doom Eternal was also announced by id. The Sinking City. Maybe this is the one that looked really creepy and spoopy. Uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood. That was announced earlier, too. This was not announced. Super Lucky Tale. This is a, uh, a VR game. And then it was ported to consoles, and now it's going to be on Switch. So you're this little fox raccoon tail thing, and you run through these games, these games of this Banjo-Kazooie... Spoilers. Banjo-Kazooie type world. It looked really neat, and it's going to be on the Switch. And this surprised me. Alien Isolation. I was not expecting this. If you ever played the original Alien Isolation, if you've not played it, you absolutely should. It's you in a space station and the alien chasing after you. And that's it. And if you make sounds or you're not sneaky, you're not using stealth, he hears you, he comes after you and eats your face and it's game over. It's super freaky and terrifying and awesome. You're so defenseless against an alien. So some of the craziest, like, most heart-pounding moments I've had in a video game are standing in a locker while the alien <sighs> walking by and you hear him, her, it, wherever it is. So Alien Isolation on the Switch. That's awesome. All this stuff is coming soon. 2019 and 2020. And speaking of Super Lucky Tail, Banjo-Kazooie showed up and the trailer was really funny. It totally trolled me because 
hut. Like, we had King K. Rule and Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong hanging out in a hut. And they look outside, and there's a silhouette of, it looked like Banjo and Kazooie, which is exactly what happened. Donkey Kong totally got trolled with a, with a silhouette of King K. Rule. Seems to be a running theme here, trolling us. But then, it was it turned out to be the Duck Hunt dog. But then, actual Banjo, Kazoo, Banjo and Kazooie showed up. So, I don't know how the licensing worked out with this. I don't know. I guess Rare and Microsoft and Nintendo, they all had a big bucket of money. It's like, hey, let's do this thing. So, now we have Banjo, Kazooie, and Smash, and that comes out in the fall. So, after announcing, let's see. So, we have Joker. We have Dragon Quest. We have Banjo, Kazooie. We got two more slots of new people, maybe. Who's next? Who could be next? Was there someone announced before? So there you go. Next we have Super Mario Maker 2. And we've seen this game actually comes out in a couple weeks, like two or three weeks at the end of the month. And people were complaining, rightfully so, that while you can play online co-op, you can't play with your friends, your match with randos. And having worked with the Nintendo back end, I understand I mean, okay, I don't actually understand why you can do this, but matchmaking is different on Nintendo's back end than it is on other systems. So, kind of see what they were talking about initially, but there are ways around it. So, Nintendo has said that, hey, we're going to have a post-release patch that will add in matchmaking with your friends. So, that's a great thing. Now, maybe by now, I also see Nintendo's logic, so it's probably something technical, because as I said, it is different than the other PlayStation and Xbox systems, how matchmaking works on the Switch, but it's not like you can't do invitations in matchmaking. That's not, it's not you can join things. That's not how it works at all. Nintendo's other thing they said was they didn't want you to match with friends, because then would, friends would just upvote each other and have their stages and levels, like, rank through other things. Maybe they'll come up with, maybe friends can't match make each other or maybe they have to play through the level to give it a thumbs up I don't know maybe they'll come up with some solution for that but Nintendo said yes we're gonna fix this we're gonna have matchmaking so that's good that's good look forward to Mario Maker 2 that has the Super Mario 3D World style already in the game a little bit of shade there that comes out the end of the month the end of this month next up Amiibo 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 I think I have some Amiibo right over here which Amiibo is this? Let's see. Who are you? Who are you? Ken! Ken! Sean Shin Ken! I'm such a nerd. One day that'll go away. No, it won't. So, Amiibo were announced. September 20th. We're going to get four Amiibo. We're going to get Link from Link's Awakening. We're going to get Squirtle. We're going to get Ivysaur, and we're going to get, finally, Solid Snake. We're going to get Solid Snake Amiibo. So those will all be out September 20th. The orders are live and hot right now on Best Buy and Amazon. So go check those out. Order now. <laughs> Next in November, we're going to get Incineroar and Crom, And then finally, in, oh, and Simon Belmont. So I'm looking forward to the Simon Belmont. That's going to be awesome. And then in next year, in 2020, is when we'll see Dark Samus. And we'll see Rich Star. Rich Star! From Dracula X. So, again, today, reserve it. Link's Awakening Link, Squirtle, Ivysaur, Solid Snake, Best Buy and Amazon. In November, we'll see Incineroar and Crom and Simon Belmont. And in 2020, we'll see Dark Samus. Now, the final thing. The thing that was awesome... <laughs> And kind of like, duh. But still, it was really awesome. They showed this great dark black footage. And then things swirling. And then they show Princess Zelda and Link going through a dungeon. They show this mummy thing that looked like Mumra from Thundercats. And then the sequel to Breath of the Wild is in development. World exclusive. To which I'll respond with, duh, of course course you're working on the Legend of Zelda that's not surprising at all whatsoever but hey you know this is fine <laughs> it looks good and I'm, I'm glad this is occurring like I knew this is going to we all know this is going to happen because if you remember the original Breath of the Wild was not a Switch game the original Breath of the Wild 
was a Wii U game. So mm, the fact that we get um, we get an actual core developed uh, Zelda game for the Switch is going to be awesome. So I am really excited about this. Hey, Pablo Vague, Vogue, Rob, please show your room collection. I would love, I would love to do that, but unfortunately, it is not in a condition to be showed off. Uh, there's still games all over the place. I am working, however, as we speak, I am working to fix the fix the game room so we see more, more of my games. Because everyone else, when they show off their stuff, they do their live stream. They have their cool games in the background, and it looks really neat. And I want to be like... <laughs> I want to be like everyone else. So I have, well, when I say I, I mean like my wife has gone in and done the deed of um, building shelves. She loves to build shelves. Like her, the container store is like me at GameStop. She absolutely loves these things. Um, so she has b built all these shelves, not built, but like put together all these shelves. And uh, we've picked up and found and located all the games. And they look pretty daggone good. They look pretty daggone good. So there's just a little bit more things I need to grab to put everything up and have it look good so that is going to occur that is going to occur so so hopefully in the next couple of streams because I'm going to be trying to do more content like this hopefully in the next couple of streams I will be able to show you the room we'll do a tour or at least I have the games behind me that'll be neat so the last thing I wanted to show you and I don't know if I can find it and if I can't I'll send a link in the description is the Legend of Zelda Zelda is in development trailer Let's see if I can find it. I don't know if I'll be able to find it easily and quickly. And I apologize for that. Show the collection. <laughs> you got it. That 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 will happen. This camera is built into my laptop, so if I move, I'll get tethered and disconnected, and things will go awry. Bad things will occur. But uh, it it will happen. Maybe uh, maybe I can take a picture. Ooh, I can take a picture and share it. Uh, you make fun of the Wii U, but uh, did you notice that Just Dance was in fact announced for the original Wii? So that's pretty cool, and I believe it's because I believe it's because that uh, certain hospitals and things like that still play these Just Dance games for like you know patients, so they can like you know get some exercise in and stuff. So that's pretty cool, and that's really neat that um, um, this is still a thing. A couple of little knickknacks along the way. Um, asking about Final Fantasy VII, I asked yesterday if Final Fantasy VII will still be episodic, and yes, it will be. Uh, this first edition that's coming out for either $60, $80, or $320 is uh, up to Midgar, the, all of Midgar. So the developers actually don't know how long it's going to be because they're still making it themselves. So hopefully we don't get like a thousand of these. Hopefully it'll be like two or three. And it's a double disc. So the fact that it's a double disc Blu-ray and that's just Midgar, like wow, how much stuff are they putting in here? So that'll be pretty cool. That'll be pretty cool. Um, let's see. The Atari VCS unit went up for pre-order. So you can do a quick Google search for that and you will see the Atari VCS, which is slated to be like its own platform. So that'll be very, very interesting if that happens. Um, if it can come to fruition. What are you doing? Stop. I'm going to try and play this video. I don't know if this will work. I don't think it will, but we can certainly try. Let's see you all bear with me for just a second. So this Atari VCS, it's, it's actually headed by our dear friend Tommy Torellico. And um, he, he was looking forward to, I actually got a chance to talk to him at E3, and he was able to do some uh, really neat stuff. So, okay, all right, cool, let's, let's do that. So let's see, let's do window capture. This is so not going to work. Maybe it will work. Match the title. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I don't think this is going to work. Oh, well. I was going to try and show the video, but that is not going to be the case. Never mind. Uh, do a Google search, or oh, I can put it in the chat. I'll put it in the chat. Go watch this video. It's good. Oop, wrong one. 
Let's get rid of this one. Boop, boop. There. And we'll do this. Control, copy, paste. Let's look at this trailer. It's dope. All right. We're about at the end of our segment. I think I've talked about most everything. I think I've, I think I've got everything that I missed yesterday. Um, uh, as I said, a lot of these games are on the eShop on sale, so be sure you check those out. Uh, a lot of things like collector's editions and pre-orders are live on Best Buy and Amazon site. Be sure you check those out as well. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. So, so for you at home, I mean, I guess we're technically all at home. I'm at home too. <laughs> what are you looking forward to playing in E3? What are you looking forward to that's coming out in the fall? Who do you think won E3? So I'll start off with who I think quote unquote won E3. Um, that's a really tough question. I think as far as presentations are concerned, the fact that Microsoft showed a lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool games, I'm going to give a big old thumbs up to them. They probably had the best press conference. They had a lot of stuff that I wanted to see. Although, me being a Japanese RPG guy, Square Enix's stuff was mainly focused on Final Fantasy. And they showed, obviously, they showed Marvel stuff, but they showed Final Fantasy. And Final Fantasy VII looked really good. As I mentioned yesterday, I'm kind of annoyed by the presentation of Barrett's character and its voice VO. But the game isn't out. I could be overreacting. Could be just fine. Could be just the scenes that they chose. Because as I've mentioned before, Barrett's character in the Japanese version was a very dad loving, not loving, but more like a father figure type person wanting to help everybody and nurture. And that's not what came across in the original version of Seven, even though it was an amazing game. So maybe this version of Switch, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah, so maybe Square Enix had the most excitement of things that I wanted to play, because I really want to play Final Fantasy VII, even though I give Final Fantasy VII a hard time. But Nintendo, I mean, the things I'm probably going to buy the most, like, I'm asking Link's Awakening, I cannot wait for Link's Awakening. That's going to be awesome. Dragon Quest Dudes and Smash Brothers, I've been begging for this for years, and it's finally here, so that makes me super duper happy. We know Breath of the Wild sequel was coming down the pipe. We knew that was going to happen, but the fact that it's acknowledged this early in the game, sure, I guess next year is probably when they'll show more about Metroid and they maybe show more of Zelda. So, I mean, Nintendo always does things that I want to play. Like, I want to play Astro Chain. I want to play Diamond Cross Mahina. Like, I want to play these games that have already been like The Witcher. They've already been on other systems, but now I can take them with me. Like, that totally, absolutely appeals to me. Mario Maker 2, I cannot wait to go through the story mode. Uh, and just in case you're not aware of what it is, the original Mario Maker, you had like 100 levels of going through stuff. This one, you still have a whole bunch of levels that are designed by the developers, but there's a story where they're like the Toes are trying, they lost all their money, they're trying to rebuild their kingdom. So you get all these coins and things to play, to make the game, to make their, to make their kingdom back. So, I mean, that's, that's, I cannot wait to play Super Mario Maker 2. So, you know, I mean, it was a good conference all around. And the fact that Sony's not there, that definitely disappoints me. But they are definitely saving some stuff for next gen. We did already see Death Stranding. Days Gone it was just released. I am going to say I am disappointed that I didn't see anything for The Last of Us 2. So maybe tomorrow, like the E3 officially started today. So maybe in the next day or two, they'll show something about The Last of Us 2. But like, I mean, like you can't even pre-order the game. Like it's just nowhere to be seen. And that is one of my most, most look for games coming in the fall and in the spring of next year. Death Stranding, The Last of Us 2, Zelda, eh, a couple other things too. Like, maybe we'll see something, we'll see. And maybe RK went up. I think they're supposed to have some more announcements too. Uh, that Turtles in Time and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Cap, I am... Mm. I told my children this morning, they were like, yay, let's buy it. I was like, sorry, mommy, you've been outvoted. The children want this. <laughs> All right. So I don't mean to ramble. I think we've just about wrapped up day three of E3, the Nintendo presser. Lots of great Nintendo news. I'm super excited about what's going on. If you're at E3, tell me what thing that you like to play. If there's a game you're looking forward to, let me know in the comments below. If there's something I miss, talk about that also in the comments below. But everyone in chat, 
thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, Dark K, I think they say Super Mario 2 is going to have over 200 levels, plus everything uploaded needs to be beaten by whoever played it before you can upload it. Yes, that's what they did with the first Mario Maker. Like, I can make the hardest level of ever, but if I couldn't beat it, I couldn't upload it. So, but maybe they're going to do something similar so friends don't just upvote each other, but you could kind of do that with the on the Wii U and on the 3DS. I don't know. I don't know. And yeah, I do have Mario Maker on the 3DS and, uh, and on the Wii U, and had a lot of fun playing through those levels. So, the fact that there's 200 levels this time... Please give me difficult developer Nintendo developer design levels. And last, well, the last time when they released Mario Maker on the Wii U, they had levels from E3 that you could download. So hopefully during like the tournament that they had going on on Saturday, some of those levels will bring back into the original game. Because I can't wait. Give me these platforming skills. I got it. This controller, uh, give it to me. Mm. Again, big giant nerd. So that's going to do it for me. So, everyone in chat, thank you for joining me. Everyone watching the VOD, thank you for watching if you made it this far. I hope I gave you a Nintendo, although I've actually talked longer than the Nintendo press conference, so you could have just watched the conference back then. Oops, sorry, my fault. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that does it for me for right now. So, again, please find us on social media. We are at Near Con on Twitter, Facebook, and on Instagram, we have a Patreon for exclusive content. We have some cool shirts on Redbubble. So check that stuff out. So please, thank you very much. I really appreciate you guys joining me, letting me geek out and talk about games. This is my most wonderful time of the year. It, it's really good to be talking about these things. And Nintendo Day is my favorite day here. Favorite day. Alrighty. So thank you very much. And remember... Stay minty, stay classy, keep gaming together. Appreciate it. Peace. Thank you very much.